In this video, we're going to look at solving equations using trial and improvement. We might use trial and improvement if we don't have a technique to solve the equation we're given. We're going to start off with a fairly straightforward case. In this particular question, it says using the method of trial and improvement, solve the following equation giving your answer correct to one decimal place. So we have x cubed plus 5x is equal to 104. The question tells us that the equation has a solution between 4 and 5. So this is going to give us a starting point. What I'm going to do is build up a table. So in my table, I'm going to have a value of x, I'm going to have the answer, and then I'm going to make a comment. So three different columns, and we're going to start with values of x, and the first one is going to be 4. So let's go ahead and put this in. So this is x. This is the answer, or the value, and then we have now the comment. So let's put in the comment, so comment just here. So if I set this up on the calculator, what I'm going to do is have the bracket, then I'm going to cube the bracket. I can either use this particular button with 3, or this one right here. I'm now going to add 5 lots of the number. So if we start now with x is equal to 4, we can write down the answer. So just substituting this into a calculator, I put 4 in my bracket just here, and 4 just here. That gives me 84. 84 is less than 104, so the comment is that 4 is too small. I'm now going to test 5. 5 will be too big, and we will be able to see that the solution is between these two values. So just switching over, we don't need to change this in the calculator other than to swap 4 for 5. So 5 is now in the brackets, and that gives us 150. My comment is that 5 is too big. The fact that 1 is too small and 1 is too big tells us that the answer is somewhere between 4 and 5. At this stage, I'm going to test the middle of the two. You can look at these values and test others. I like to just take the middle. At this stage, the test that I'm going to do of a trial is to one decimal place. A common error is that students put 4.56. It's only ever to one decimal place at this stage. So I'm just going to swap this over. Now typing in, instead of 5, I'm going to have 4.5. And instead of 5, I'm going to have 4.5. So this now gives me 909 over 8, which is 113.625. So 113.625. 113 is bigger than 104, so this is too big. What we can see now is that the answer is going to be somewhere between 4 and 4.5. 4 is too small, 4.5 is too big. The next logical step is to try 4.4. Don't try 4.48, 4.49, just try all of these to one decimal place. Again, you might spot that we might need to go further, but from here I'm just going to put in the 4.4. So substituting in 4.4, when I do this now, that's going to give me 107.184. So 107.184. Eight, four. The comment is that this is going to be too big. That tells me that my answer is somewhere between 4.4 and 4. The next logical step is to try 4.3. Don't try 4.3582 or something, just stick to 4.3. So delete, switch in 4.3 and we will evaluate 4.3. 4.3 is going to give me 101.007. So 101.007. This is less than 104, so I can say that this is too small. What we've done here is found that the answer is going to lie somewhere between 4.3 and 4.4. We need to give our answer correct to one decimal place. It's either going to be 4.3 or it's going to be 4.4. We've got a few different methods of executing the last part of this question. The way I like to do it is to test the midpoint. And just showing this on a number line, we can see what's going to happen. You certainly don't have to do this, but it is an option for you. 
So if I think now I've got this point just here, this is 4.3, 4.3 and this is 4.4. This value is too small and then the next one, 4.4, is too big. So if I can test in the middle, which is 4.35, which is my only test that's of a, a greater accuracy than one decimal place, then I can see which it's going to round to. So just try this out now. What I'm going to do is write in here 4.35. So in my box here, this is the only time now that I've gone beyond one decimal place in terms of the accuracy. So let's see what 4.35 is going to give us. So in the calculator now, just changing this over, we can put it as 4.35, 4.35, 4.35, and we end up now with 104.062 and so on and so forth. So 104 point, and that was going to be 0.6206 dot, dot, dot. Now, this is very close, but we can say, well, actually, it's too big. At this point right here, this is too big. So we got too big here. So 4.4 was too big, 4.35 was too big. So any value in here is going to round to 4.3 correct to one decimal place. So just writing down therefore, we can say that it's gonna be 4.3 to one DP. So all I've done here is considered the middle of the two if this is too big and this is still too big, then the answer is somewhere between 4.3 and 4.35, which is going to round to 4.3 to one decimal place. You don't need to show any trials greater than one decimal place at this point, then you just look at the midpoint. You can consider which of these it's closer to. I don't think it's very easy to see with this one, but doing a little test like this is really quite clear when we do that. So that now is using trial and improvement to solve the equation correct to one decimal place. Let's now look at a slightly more challenging question. So this one says using the method of trial and improvement find one solution of the equation below given your answer correct to two decimal places. So this time we're going to two decimal places and we're not given a starting value. So if you're unsure, just think of some numbers to try. Looking at this now, I think I'm going to try two and one. If they're completely wrong, we'll worry about that later, but for now, that's what I'm going to try. They look a good, uh, old, an educated guess. So what I'm going to do is try it now. X is equal to one and X is equal to two to begin with. If I need to change them, I will do. So given my answer, and making my comment. So this time we're going to two decimal places. So we will try one to begin with. I'm gonna set this up on the calculator and I'm going to have 104. Then I'm going to have my brackets and I'm going to square the bracket. Then I will subtract three away. So if I now put in here, we're going to have one. That will give me 101. We can see that clearly this is going to be too big. So too big. I'm now going to try x is equal to 2. So try now 2. We're going to go ahead and put 2 in here. So 2 in the bracket, just substituting the 1 for a 2, that gives me 23. So we can say now that 23 is too small. We can see then that the answer to this, or the one of the solutions, is going to be between 1 and two. At this stage, I'm going to locate it to one decimal place and then go on and look at locating it to two decimal places. If we look quite clearly, it's a lot closer to two than it is to one. So instead of trying the midpoint, I'm going to try 1.9. So this time I'm trying 1.9. So I'm gonna sub in here 1.9 and we'll get into that bracket. So we've got 1.9. So 1.9 is going to give me 25.808. So 25.80 dot, 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 dot. This is still going to be now too small. So just writing this in, this is too small. My next trial is going to be 1.8. 
So what I'm trying to do here is locate it correct to one decimal place initially. So if I do that, I can come down and change this over. Let's come into the denominator and switch this over. So 1.8, that now is too big. So 29.09, let's write this in. So 29.09 dot dot dot, this is too big. What I can see from this is that now it's going to be somewhere between these two. So what I'm going to do is test the midpoint. I'm now going, so I located it within the nearest integer, within the nearest 0 0.1 or tenth. I'm now going to start going to two decimal places. So if we try 1.85, so halfway between the two, 1.85, and we will come down into the denominator, let's come into the denominator and switch this over. 1.85. 27.38 so 27.38 dot 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 this is going to be too big we can see that that is greater what i'm now going to do is try one point and it's we know that it's going to be closer to the uh, so if this one is too big and this is too small it's going to be closer to the two or we could say to the 1.9 we're going to try 1.86 so if I try 1.86, coming into the denominator, now let's come down into here. So let's put that in. That is going to give me 27.06. So let's write that in. So 27.06. It's still here too big. I'm now going to try 1.87. So just extending my table down a little, 1.87. So at this time, I'm testing now to two decimal places. So let's try 1.87 in here. So 1.87 and just switching this over. So let's bring that down. Let's go into the denominator. So 1.87 and that is going to give me the answer now 26.74. So let's put that in 26.74. So 26.74 dot 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 and this is going to be too small. We can see now that I have these two and these now are to two decimal places. Again, going back to my little number line, which you certainly don't have to do, I'm going to put these values on. So let's go ahead and put these on. We've got now a midpoint that we can test. If you want to study these two numbers and say, I know which it's closer to, you can conclude at that point. I like to write by 1.86, 1.87, and this is going to be 1.865. We know that this time this one is too big. This one is going to be too small. So testing the midpoint. So on here I'm just going to put this in as my final trial. And that's 1.865. So 865, let's put that in. Just here, 1.865. So if I just now change this over, let's come into here and switch this over. 65, we've got 65. That gives me 26.9. So 26.9 dot dot dot, it is too small. So if we look at that just here, this one right now is going to be too small. So writing this on, so that's too small. So we can see if uh, 1.87 is too small, 1.865 is too small, then it's going to be in this interval here. And all values here will round to 1.86. Therefore, it's going to be 1.86. And that is correct to 2 dp. So correct now to 2 dp. So all I've done is located it initially between the nearest integer, then the nearest tenth, then I'm looking now at the nearest one hundredth or two decimal places. I locate one is too big, one is too small. I then test the midpoint and give my answer correct to two decimal places. So these are typical questions that you might be asked. Another one that you might see, and we'll just sketch this up. That one's done now. You might be given that you have a uh, an area. So let's say that this is going to be an area. And you might have, for example, on here, uh, let's say this is going to be 2x. And then you might have on here x minus 0 0.3. And you're told now that the area is going to be 41.8 meters squared. A question might ask you to find now the length of these 
by setting this up and using trial and improvement. So what we could write then is 2x multiplied by x minus 0 0.3 is equal to 41.8. At this stage, we would go back and try exactly the same here and find suitable values of x. We'll get one that's too big and one that's too small and then start chasing it to the level of accuracy that was required. Generally speaking, it would be to one decimal place. So this is now putting it in a functional term. And if you want to have a go at that one and leave a comment, you can do. That is just going to give us now a value and it's just a case of solving it when we don't always have the skills to do that. So trial and improvement to one and two decimal places.